Welcome back to the Toggle Theater Tony special this fine Saturday, 2012. We are talking now with a Tony nominated actress, and it's great to say that because she's someone who was probably robbed of a Tony award or, or certainly a Tony nomination a decade ago when she was playing Little Sally in the hilarious Broadway musical Urine Town. We haven't really seen her on the Broadway boards since, but she's back with a vengeance in uh, the comedy Don't Dress for Dinner. She's Spencer Caden, and we're very excited to have her in the neighborhood for the special. Spencer, can you hear me? I can. Yay! Okay, we were having microphone trouble before. Hopefully we'll, we'll get through this okay. So, uh, stupid question, but how does it feel to be nominated? Oh, my gosh. It is so thrilling. It's, it's kind of crazy that I've been gone from New York, from New York for so long, and uh, to come back and be received like this is pretty spectacular. You've still been working the past 10 years. I know you got married, you, you had a kid, but have you been acting just not so much in New York? I haven't really been acting. I've been in Los Angeles, which is a whole other kind of acting ball game. And so I've been really lucky that I've had so much time to spend with my son. And I audition periodically, but not that often. I just I feel much more like a New York actress than an L.A. one, but uh -huh. I seem to live in L.A. now. I've had some confusing times, but also uh, it's a great lifestyle there. But I, we, we've, we've gone back and forth from New York to L.A. a lot. And I'm, I think we'll continue to do so. The thing is that you're married also to a playwright and an actor and someone who works a lot in New York. So how do you balance being like a two-actor family with having a marriage and a child to raise? Well, we have learned never to make any plans because something always changes. Every time we think we know what's going to happen a few months ahead, it inevitably becomes different. Or the phone rings and suddenly... Mark's offered a show in New York, or he's considering something in D.C. or San Francisco. Um, we, we try not to travel around too much anymore now that our son is in school, but he did it in kindergarten in New York and first grade in L.A., and he's dirty and amazing and had a great time both places. So I think as long as we stick to those two places and he's familiar with both, it'll be okay. Cool. If you auditioned for Don't Dress for Dinner, do you remember what monologue you did or, or how you, what was your thing? Oh, well, I did Don't Dress for Dinner with the same director in Chicago three years ago. So I did audition for that. And Mark was also in it. And he went in before me. I was in a cab on my way to the audition. And he called me in the cab and said, yeah, the director wants to know if you can uh, do it in a French accent. <laughs> this is like five minutes before, and, and as all actors do, we say, sure, and did, and it was it went well. And so he cast me in the Chicago production, and then when Roundabout decided to do it, they had fortunately seen the production in Chicago and were happy with the work I did, and so they offered it to me in New York, which was great, because, you know, you never know if you're going to be replaced by someone with lots and lots of television and movie credits, and I'm grateful that they didn't replace me. Plus, I'm sure they also saw you, you in your in town uh, years back. Yes. But let me ask: Does that lead to any friction? Because your husband was not in is not in the Broadway show, so no, he's not. He was he was busy when they were casting it. He was meant to do Funny Girl, oh. which was postponed. So that was another you know year of our lives that we thought we had planned out, and then the Met show got yanked. So we were like, oh, okay, interesting. Once you knew that you had the role in Don't Dress, well, well, you did it three years ago, but did you do any research? Did you um, work on your accent then more? Um, how, do you, how do you prepare for the role that you have? The strange thing is, I don't know, maybe it's not strange. I didn't prepare at all. And I, I, I've been saying this because I watched so many Pink Panther movies as a child, but not that his French accent is anything but ridiculous, but it kind of comes naturally to me. I didn't have to do any research, and um, doing this kind of farce, I think I have good instincts for it, so I didn't really have to uh, think about that too much. It really just doesn't feel like work at all on stage in this play. It's so much fun. And speaking of fun, I have to say that the first time that I saw Spencer Caden was literally like two decades ago in Chicago in those first few exciting months when they were creating Too Much Light Makes the Baby Go Blind, the neo-futurist show. And I have to ask, what 
First, first of all, how you got involved in the neo futurists, and also as an actress, what you've taken over the years from performing in Too Much Light and with the neo futurists. I went to college with Anne Halliday, who is now married to Greg Codis, who wrote Your in Town. Are you right. seeing a connection? Anne joined the neo futurists, uh, I think, the year before I did. So she is the one who introduced me to that theater company. And then Greg joined the year after I did, and they fell in love. Mm-hmm. and got married. Um, so that's how I fortunately came across them. There are so many amazing theater companies in Chicago, and I feel like that was just great kismet that I ended up there. Because I probably would have ended up going the route of Second City or Improv Olympic, which I'm sure would have been great, and I know and love all, a lot of those people, but somehow the neo Futurist demanded a different part of me that I might not have pursued in terms of being completely honest on stage and writing from a place of truth and it was it smells like improv but it's not it's all scripted and it, there's not a lot of we don't pretend we're anyone other than who we are and I think that really grounded me as an actor uh, you know, just having come out of college do you feel that you have a, a particular bent for comedy or is it just that you're generally cast that way I think I have uh, I I'm a little bit scared of drama, I think is what it is, so I don't gravitate toward it. I've never done Shakespeare. I remember doing Chekhov in college and just not taking myself seriously enough to pull it off. My favorite thing to do is things like You're in Town, which are really dark comedies, where you get you, you do play it very truthfully, and there are definitely moments of honest sadness in there, and that was an opportunity for me to um, sing a song that was genuinely heartbreaking, but also completely ridiculous and so the whole laugh cry thing really appealed to me also speaking of comedy if people might know her from media you did a little bit of mad tv a few years back and i'm wondering the difference between doing comedy on stage and trying to do sketch comedy on television i think uh, the people at mad tv were so great and so lovely and charming and i wasn't really there long enough to completely feel relaxed and comfortable there so i never felt like I was able to kind of sink my teeth in and let loose, and uh, they didn't necessarily know me well enough to write for me. So I see when I see those sketch comedy shows on TV, and I can, you know, you can tell when those actors are really in their elements. And I don't think I ever arrived at that place, but I was happy to be there. I was already pregnant when they cast me, so it kind of worked out for me to just do the end of the season and then go off and have a baby. Speaking of the end of things, Don't Dress for Dinner is only running a little while longer. I think it's closing on June 17th. So the question now becomes, what's next for Spencer Caden? Well, I have a plane ticket to go back to Los Angeles on June 21st, but my husband called yesterday and he's being called in for a show at Lincoln Center that starts, I think, in July or August. So like I said, at any moment, the phone rings and everything could change. We could end up being back in New York two weeks after I get back. We actually have the contents of a two-bedroom apartment in storage in the Bronx. (laughs) In case we need it, it kind of ended up that way last year. We shoved everything into storage thinking we'd be back eventually. I do know that a new Trader Joe's opened around the corner for me in L.A. I'm really excited about that. Isn't Trader Joe's wonderful? We don't have them in um, in Colorado. I was living on Long Island for for most of my life, and and we had one about a quarter mile from the house. And now that it's gone, not where I live, I'm like, oh, how how do we exist? How do we survive, you know? Waxing rhapsodic over Trader Joe's. Waxing about Trader Joe's. Yeah. But But but, knowing that a Trader Joe's is right near me in L.A. has made the thought of going back there a lot more appealing. (laughs) But, But is this how you arrange it? Like, if one of you... Uh, your husband or you gets a role, you will travel and stay together rather than one person going off for two or three months and and staying apart. This is the first time we have not gone all together. We've we've gone back and forth five times since our son was born, and this time it worked out that Mark had some TV work in L.A. when I was coming here, and we so we made the decision that Mark and Haskell would stay in L.A., and they've been coming back and forth to visit me. And I actually flew back to L.A. for one day last weekend because I couldn't take it anymore. I missed them so much. Mm. Um, So now that we've tried it being apart, no one suffered terribly, but it's not ideal. I think we'll stay together from now on no matter what that means. And because our son is so sturdy, he can change school in the middle of the year and he'll be fine. He's he's such a laid-back, cool guy. Do you see an actor in him or, or heaven forbid? He is 
such a goofball. <laughs> he spends a lot of time making faces in the mirror. He watches a lot of Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd movies. And so, I mean, he, and he's a gymnast. So he's, <laughs> he's certainly on track to become some kind of insane clown. And he loves to throw himself off the edge of things. Who knows? I'm not going to stop him from doing what he wants. It would be delightful if he did not want to be an actor. It's just, you know, when you think of your child, it's not that kind of uncertainty is not what you would choose for your child. But again, I, he can do whatever makes him happy. And these days, what career isn't uncertain? Not like doctors and lawyers have automatic notes. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So he, I mean, as long as the world is like it is, he may as well do something he's passionate about. And if now, that means... Yeah. Being a Cirque du Soleil nut job, then <laughs> go for it. Last question for the wonderful Spencer Caden, who's in Don't Dress for Dinner at the Roundabout until June 17th. Uh, I guess since you mentioned the people that your son is watching and trying to sort of imitate and learning from, who are the actors and actresses who most influenced you in what you do? I think it is a lot of those silent movie dudes. Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd and, and also Peter Sellers. Um, I, I think Peter Sellers especially has such uh, a beautiful deadpan about him, but he could also be completely crazy, which is sort of what I get to do in Don't Dress for Dinner. I come in being very, very straight, and I try to be straight and almost uh, meek for, or homely for as long as possible until I, it's demanded that I transform into someone's mistress, um, and then I can just go wild. And so I think that's what appeals to me is actors who, who have that ability. And it's all grounded in truth. And Irene Dunn also, I was watching some old movies with her and Cary Grant, and she had such such an easy, light touch about her. And it was so effortlessly hilarious and also heartbreaking. And I just I love watching her. Well, people have loved watching Spencer Caden in Too Much Light and in Urinetown, and now Don't Dress for Dinner on Broadway. Congratulations on your nomination. Um, I'm, Thank unfortunately, you. I'm, I'm not going to get to see the show, but I sure wish I could, because I'm sure you're wonderful in it. And um, Well, maybe if I meet you someday, I'll, I'll do a little, perform a little one-woman show of it. That's great. You can do all different accents. You can do, like, <laughs> one monologue in French and another Swedish. Go for it. Go wild. Anyway, Spencer, I want to thank you so much for being part of the show, and, and again, congratulations and, and much, much success. Thanks. Nice to talk to you. You too. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.